All right, welcome to this short little video on how to do analysis of variance and multiple comparisons using SAS. This really is just an introduction to it. So the first thing we've got to do, as usual, is import the data. We're going to use the usual data set, the stat grades data set. And again, click on the little running person up here, or F3 on your keyboard. Looks like everything came in correctly. Let's do a proc print. Just to double check, just to get a feel for the data. And remember, you always want to get a feel for the data. Observations and identif identifier, grade, gender, GPA, college. One thing you'll notice is that there's only one lasso person in this group. So if we're trying to determine the effect of college on grade, or see if there's different grades for different colleges, having one person from Lasso is not going to give us enough in information about Lasso. So let's take Lasso and bundle it with all the other group. Now let me show you how to do that to recode Lasso into other. So we'll go back up here to the data step. So wh what are we going to do? We're going to see which of those have college equal to lasso and then change those color college to other. That's all we're doing. So there we go. So if the college value is lasso, then we're going to make the college value other. If the college isn't lasso, then it's not going to do anything. And notice down here, the lasso person is now an other person. So we just recoded part of our data. That will be very useful in the future for you and all of your data analysis. There are many ways of doing it. This is just one of them. OK, get to know your data. So let's go ahead and look at some graphics. Histogram, we're going to do histograms by college, so we're going to have five histograms. Hmm, that doesn't look right. What's wrong? Ah, it's not sorted in ascending sequence. Ah, that's right. We have to sort by college before we can do a histogram. So it's just proc sort. Now we've got it. So here's business. Here's arts and sciences. That looks really normal. Here's College of Agricultural Science and Natural Resource. Education. Other. That one looks pretty normal, too. We could also do box plots. Side-by-side -side box plots. Get a little feel. It looks like the average for Kasner and Ed are higher than everything else. Oh, this is GPA. We're looking at grade. So let's rerun those. There we go. Looks like Kasner's average, which is the diamond, is much higher than any others. Looks like business is much lower than all the others. So already we have an idea that perhaps there is an effect or a differential effect of college on grade that Kasner students seem to do much better than business students. Well, let's figure this out. Let's do one-way ANOVA. And it's called one-way ANOVA because we have one independent variable. It's PROC GLM. GLM stands for Generalized Linear Models. Give it data. Specify the class. And class, again, is the categorical variable, college. And then the model. The model is going to be the dependent variable, equal sign, independent variable. Or in this framework, it's going to be the measurement, equal sign, grouping variable. And then we run it, and then 
because of some internal features with the GLM process, we're going to have to do a quit immediately after. I guess have to is not the right word, but that's all there is to it. Here's the results of the GLM procedure. Here's the first page. It tells us there are five levels in the college, business, arts and sciences, CASNR, education, and other. There were 100 observations that were read, and we were able to use all of them. This is the usual ANOVA table. The source, the degrees of freedom, sum of squares, the mean square, the F value, all those we calculated in class, and then the P value. P value is less than alpha, therefore we reject the null hypothesis. Again, in this case, the null hypothesis is that all the means are equal. These two tables give different types of sums of squares. Uh, since we're doing one-way analysis of variance, these will give a, absolutely no additional information. If you move on to two-way and above analysis of variance, these will give additional information, but since we only do one-way in this course, we'll have to postpone discussing that until Statistics for Experimenters 2. Here's a histogram. I mean, uh, sorry, box plot, side-by-side -side box plot. Again, the diamonds are the means. The horizontal bar here is the median. This also gives the test statistic. F is 10.18. F is 10.18. And the p-value, in this case, again, less than alpha. So we've now concluded that, assuming the analysis of variance is the correct procedure to use here, we've we're able to conclude that at least one of the five colleges has a different average grade. Hmm. So let's test the assumptions. Remember that there are two main assumptions above and beyond the usual assumption of independence. The first is the assumption of normality. So we remember how to do that from earlier. Sort it by college, proc univariate, and then give it normal. And that will uh, give the normality tests, several normality tests. We call it the one that we're going to be using will be the Shapiro-Wilk test. Also note that there's five tests being performed here, one for each of the colleges. Therefore, you should multiply the p-values for the Shapiro-Wilk test by five. Here's the p-value for the Shapiro-Wilk test for College of Business. We don't have evidence that it's non-normal. The next one is for College of Arts and Sciences. There's a p-value 0.3. Multiply that by 5. That's also greater than a uh, alpha. Therefore, no evidence of non-normality for the College of Arts and Sciences. College of Agricultural Science and Natural Resource. Multiply that p-value by 5. Again, because there's five tests, five normality tests we're running. There's no evidence of non-normality for Kasner. Education, 0.3477 times 5, also greater than alpha. And finally, the other group, 0.9155, again, greater than alpha. We multiply that by 5, greater than alpha. So n no evidence of non-normality, which means that this model and this data pass that assumption test. The other assumption test is equality of variance in the populations, in the five populations here. There's many ways of testing for equality of variances, what's actually called homogeneity of variance. Uh, we're going to use the basic Levine test. To do the Levine test, notice that the first three lines again are just the same as the PROC GLM from above. We're really just adding this new line, the means line states the uh, grouping variable. HOV test is homogeneity of variance test, and we're going to have SAS run a Levine test. Levine offers several types. Um, we're going to use type equals square, so it's going to be squares of the uh, measurements instead of the absolute values. We'll run that. Output from the GLM procedure. Starts way up here. Five levels, that's familiar. This is also familiar from the last GLM proc that we ran. This as well. Here's the new line. 
Levine's test for homogeneity of grade variance. So it tells us immediately that the null hypothesis is that the variances are the same. Homogeneous variances are the same. So we look to see if we can reject that null hypothesis. There's the p-value. It's 0 0.8. 0 0.8 is greater than 0 0.05, which is our alpha. Therefore, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, this data and model pass this assumption test as well. So it passed the normality tests, and it passed the Levine homogeneity tests. So it passes all of those assumption tests, which means that analysis variance actually was the correct procedure, or we are allowed to use it, and we're able to conclude that at least one of the means is different from the others. That's all we're able to conclude right now. One of the means is different from the others. We don't know which means. We just know that at least one, could be two, could be three, but at least one is different from all the others. All that work, and that's all we're able to conclude. But that's fine. The next step is to determine which is different. And not just which is different, but which is different and in which way. How are we going to do that? Again, it's the PROC GLM. These three lines are going to be exactly the same as before. We add in this new line. Means, college is going to be the categorical variable. And then after the slash is going to be the multi com multiple comparison test we want to use. We're going to use the two key HSD test. When we run those lines, we get a lot of output. Let's see, where do we start? We start back here. Same output, same output for the GLMs, same output for the G PROC GLM. Nothing there is different. Here's the new part. Tukey Studentized Range HSD Test for Grade. Specifies that alpha is 0.05, error degrees of freedom, error mean square, we calculated those in class. Critical value, we also calculated in class. That was a lot of work. SAS does it all for you. But the drawback is you've got this incredibly large table that you have to interpret. So how do you do that? The way that I do it is I look to see, I look for the stars. The stars indicate that the difference is statistically significant at the 0.05 level. In other words, for this one, we know that Kasner minus Cas is significantly different from zero, which means, since the difference actually is positive, Kasner has a statistically higher average grade than Cas students. Since Kasner minus Cas is positive, Kasner is greater than Cas at a statistically significant level. And since that difference is 11.391, I'd say that's a practically significant level as well. Kasner is also greater than other. Kasner is greater than business by a whole lot. Kasner is not significantly higher than education. No stars here. Therefore, this difference is not significantly different from zero. There's no detected difference between the average Kasner grade and the average education grade. So Kasner is not significantly different from education, but it is higher, significantly higher than arts and sciences, other, and business. We know from here that education is significantly higher than business. We know that arts and sciences is significantly less than Kasner, which we knew from above. We know arts and sciences is significantly higher than business. Other is significantly lower than Kasner, which we also knew from above. And business is significantly less than every other college. So here's what we can conclude from this. Business is significantly less in terms of average grade than all the other colleges. Kasner is significantly more than all the other colleges in terms of average grade, except for education. And there's no significant difference between the education, arts and sciences, and other. It's kind of interesting. Business 
the lowest, caste near the highest, except it may not be higher than education. So that was multiple comparisons. And we can do multiple comparisons if we reject the, the null hypothesis of analysis of variance. If after we do analysis of variance and the p-value is greater than alpha, we conclude that there's no detected difference amongst the, th uh, amongst the several po subpopulations. If we've failed to detect a difference, it doesn't make sense to then go and look for a difference by doing multiple comparisons. Finally, remember um, there were two assumptions for analysis of variance. There was the equality of variances and the normality. If any of those are violated by the data in the model, you can't use analysis of variance. You'll use what's called the Kruskal-Wallis test. Here's what you would run. This looks very familiar to us. It's very similar to what we've done with the two sample tests. In fact, I think the code is exactly the same. The only difference is the class variable, college in this case, has more than two levels. So SAS knows to run a Kruskal-Wallis test on it. P is less than alpha. Reject the null hypothesis of equal means. And therefore, conclude that at least one of the means is different from the others. Can we do multiple comparisons with Kruskal-Wallis test? Absolutely. And I encourage you to take the non-parametrics course where we cover how to do that. Well, that takes us to the end of this video. I hope this was helpful. Take care of yourself. See you in class.